Alright, so these are a few of the parts you're going to need to start off with. Of course, you're going to need the uh, entire frame, which I have on the side here. But I have four motors at the top, four electronic speed controllers, also known as ESCs, the main body of the frame, which is those two plates um, there at the bottom. I have my NASA flight controller, uh, which is the flight controller I chose. There's several different types of flight controllers out there, um, but this is a very good option. Um, and then on the left, I have my receiver module for my transmitter. So this is what's going to receive the signals from my controller um, and tell the quadcopter where to go. I also have a small cord on the top to the left of the motors, which is going to be my power input, where I plug my battery in and that's going to provide the main power to my quadcopter. The first thing we're going to want to start off doing is wiring the electronic speed controllers to the body of the quadcopter. Um, in the case of this frame, the, the bottom part of the frame is actually acting as the power distribution board. So um, there's some PCB board and it's distributing the power from the main input that you can see there on the right and it's distributing it out to all of the electronic speed controllers. Um, some frames won't come like this uh, and you can either build or buy a power distribution board. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to wire um, these electronic speed controllers onto the board. The first thing you want to do is make sure there's a little bit of solder on all of your solder points. Um, I've done it to all of these already. Uh, I'm just going to add a little bit more to this one and basically just heat up the contact point a little bit with the tip of your soldering iron and apply some solder to that point until you have a nice little bubble. You want to make sure the bubble is big enough that it's going to be able to um, fully encapsulate your um, wire for the electronic speed controller. This will just ensure that your speed controller is not going to come off. I'm going to start by wiring my power input cord where I'm going to plug my battery into to these two contacts on my power distribution board. This is going to be the positive and the negative input uh, for my power. So I've already tinned uh, the contact points and the tip of the wire by putting a little bit of solder on them and now I'm just going to go ahead and heat it up and make sure that that bubble completely consumes uh, that tip of the wire so that I can't see the tip of the wire anymore. That's going to make the best contact. It's okay if you can see a little bit of the wire here and there but to really make the best contact you want to completely consume it. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the negative side um, and that will be the completion for that. We're going to start by tinning the tip of the wire. So you should have you know, a little bit of the wire stripped off the tip. Um, and we're going to go ahead and just heat up the tip a little bit and add a little bit of solder to each tip. Once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing that we did with the main power input cord. Just heat up each of the contact points, the tip of the wire, and solder them together. Go ahead and do this for all four of your speed controllers. I'm not going to show you in the video because it's quite repetitive, but I'll show you the final product. Once you have the main power input and the electronic speed controllers wired, your quadcopter should look something like this. Next we're going to install the NASA flight controller. Inside this box you should have a GPS unit, a flight controller, an LED unit, and a power management unit. The main controller is in the center at the bottom of the image. The power management unit is the black box. Um, up at the top left and then the GPS unit is on the right with the LED unit being the small square. 
Um, you also have a mounting bracket for the GPS. You have a base, um, a little silver cross. You have a rod uh, right above the controller. You also have a bracket to mount to the GPS, which I have attached to the bottom of it already. We'll begin the installation of the NASA flight controller by installing the power management unit. We're going to install this exactly the same way we did with the electronic speed controllers. The only difference is we're going to be attaching it to the same solder point that we attached the power input cord to. You want to make sure to be careful when heating up this solder point because you can see that the power input cord is already attached to there and heating it up is going to make it come loose. So either be careful and just heat up part of the, the solder joint or um, just be delicate with it and don't push the, the other cord off of its position. You can also see I've installed some double-sided mounting tape um, around that center circle of the um, bottom frame plate. That's going to be where we're going to install the NASA main controller. Installing the NASA is pretty straightforward. Um, one thing to keep in mind is on top of the NASA there's going to be a little arrow telling you which direction is forward. Make sure you have that arrow pointing the direction you want to be forward on your quadcopter. It's also important that you mount the NASA as straight as you can and as close to the center of gravity of your quadcopter as possible. Now we can start plugging things in. Um, we can start by plugging the motors into their proper ports. So in the front uh, section of the NASA, you'll see M1 through M6. This is for motor 1 through motor 6. Now the way you determine which motor is which is you look at the NASA, the direction that it's facing, and then the front right motor is motor 1, and then you work your way counterclockwise around the quad for motor 2, 3, and 4. So the front right is motor 1, the front left is motor 2, the back left is motor 3, and the back right is motor 4. So go ahead and plug the ports for those into the correct port um, on the NASA. Now it depends on what kind of servo plug you have, but on, the, on mine the colors are brown, orange, and red. Um, and the brown um, is the top. Sometimes it will have a little groove in it that will show you which way to plug it in. The next thing I'm going to do is first consolidate the power management unit and put it where I want its final place to be inside the quadcopter. And I'm also going to put the transmitter's uh, receiver module on. And it's going to attach it somewhere way that the PMU is going to attach. Um, this particular receiver module has a main receiver um, and then it has an external receiver that I'm going to velcro to one of these little wings on the side of the frame you can see. You can see I have a velcro patch there on the left side. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit of double sided tape on the side of the NASA and mount the power management unit up on the side as well as the um, receiver module. Next we're going to continue plugging things in. You can see on the NASA on the opposite side from our motor ports you have A, E, T, R, U and then your X1, X2, X3 ports. Um, these correspond with your aileron, throttle, elevator, rudder, gear and um, auxiliary ports on your receiver. So go ahead and match up the ones that um, correspond. Aileron goes to A, throttle goes to T, rudder goes to R, gear goes to U, um, and then AUX1 and AUX2 are going to depend on which um, controls on your transmitter you want to control which. I currently have AUX1 going to X2 and um, AUX2 going to X1. Um, 
on X3, you're actually going to plug in the servo cable that comes from the PMU. So go ahead and do that. And then the final thing you need to plug in is the gray cable um, coming from the power management unit needs to plug in to the top port um, on the right side of the back of the NASA. Um, there's one that says LED and then one that says EXP. Go ahead and plug the power management unit cable into the EXP port. Now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and mount my LED module on the bottom of my quadcopter. Uh, go ahead and make sure that the USB port is accessible so that you can um, set up your NASA with the uh, NASA Assistant on a PC. So I'm going to run the LED up through kind of a bottom hole in the frame um, to help keep it out of the way and I'm eventually going to end up zip tying it um, out of the way so it's not flapping around. The cable's a little long so you can mount it out on an arm if you want, um, whatever you prefer. Um, and then I'm going to plug it in uh, just the way I did with the PMU uh, cable. I'm going to plug it into the LED port in the back of the NASA. Now I'm going to go ahead and start installing the arms of the quad and make it start looking more like a quadcopter. Um, when you do this, make sure the wires on your electronic speed controllers are situated how you want them. I make sure mine go through the center of the um, two little contact points of the, the legs. It just helps keep them out of the way and consolidated. Um, it helps them keep it centralized so I can zip tie um, the speed controller to the arm really easily without too many wires coming in from all over the place. So go ahead and do all four of these. Again, I'm not going to show all four. I'll just show what it looks like when we finish. Uh, installing all four of these legs on the bottom plate. We'll do the top plate uh, in a few minutes. We should now be looking something like this. Four arms installed, all the wires in the middle. Um, our speed controllers are going out to reach for our motors, which uh, we can install now, and our power input cord is right there. So for the motors, what we want to do is usually they come with a little mounting bracket. You can use it or you don't have to. I tend to think that it makes um, it a little bit more stable um, and rigid. It does add slightly um, extra weight though. So that's just something for you to determine based on your setup. Attaching the motor is pretty basic. Just um, make sure the wires are oriented the way you want them to. Um, I like mine to point towards the speed controllers. Um, you also might not have a choice in that uh, based on the way the holes are set up on the bottom of the motor and your uh, quadcopter arm. Um, they might just line up a certain way. You need to make sure that that's good. Um, so go ahead and attach all four motors to all four arms and we will move on. You should have something that looks kind of like this. Now we can plug the motors into the speed controllers. If neither your speed controllers or motor had bullet connectors attached, um, just go ahead and solder those on. Um, it's a pretty simple solder. Um, usually the motor package or the speed controller package will come with the bullet connectors. Um, if not, just go ahead and attach those. And then plug all three in and don't worry about which one goes where for now. You may have to make some modifications um, to determine the direction the motor turns when you start setting up your NASA flight controller on the computer. Finally, we'll install the top plate um, in the GPS unit. So for this, just go ahead and again, like the LED, it's got a long cable. Um, go ahead and feed it through however you want um, to consolidate that cable and just make sure that when you're finished feeding it through, it plugs into the GPS port on the PMU. So that's actually gonna be on the uh, one of the short ends of the PMU. There's a little port that says GPS. Um, go ahead and plug the GPS cable into that port. Um, and then once you've done that, all you have to do is put the same screws in the uh, top plate 
and screw it on. To keep the electronic speed controllers from dangling around and making all sorts of problems, um, you can zip tie them on uh, to the arms however you want. Um, I go through the middle of the arm to keep it from sliding forward and backward. Um, but you can double up zip ties, use bigger zip ties, just attach them however you want um, to get them out of the way. If you have a little bit of excess uh, wire on your electronic speed controllers connecting to the motors, you can also zip tie that away as well. I actually ended up cutting off my excess wire and making um, them plug in directly um, without any extra wire on there. and It holds itself up um, quite nicely. Now we're just about completely finished. Um, go ahead and attach the GPS uh, how you want, some double-sided sticky tape, and um, put it on the mounting bracket on the top. I've also added some green LED lights to the back arms of the quadcopter for orientation purposes, so I know which direction it's facing um, at night flying, or even in the day, it kind of helps. You can also wire in some smaller plugs to that main power uh, so that you can plug in multiple things. If you're doing FPV or um, running a gimbal or something like that, you can use that th those plugs as an extra output. Sorry about the bad flight test video quality, um, but I don't know what happened. Anyways, uh, before you fly, make sure you um, set up your NASA on the PC. Just plug it in with the USB cable that came with it and um, set up all the parameters. If you have any questions about that, just uh, post in the comments or anything like that. Good luck on your build, and I look forward to um, hearing about them if you have any questions. land.